The lights, okay. Okay, um, thanks for coming. Uh, my name's Dwayne Philippi. I work for Gigaspaces Technologies, and uh, we have a product uh, called Cloudify that's an open source uh, orchestrator for cloud platforms and others. And I'm going to be describing the, some of the challenges and solutions for orchestrating uh, multiple platforms simultaneously with the same orchestrator, um, how this can be done in a specific example. Um, describe a real world effort for orchestrating Kubernetes along with uh, microservices on Kubernetes as well as uh, having those services interact with external components that are outside of Kubernetes. So in a single description. So uh, I think historically this is a, this is a good idea for, uh, or a good way of explaining exactly the value of orchestration, the kind of problems it can solve that are uh, non-trivial. So. So we'll be automating not just Kubernetes, uh, but we'll also be uh, throwing in MongoDB in there. We'll be deploying a microservice and wiring it all up and then scaling it. OK, so here's our target uh, architecture. For those that aren't familiar with Kubernetes, um, it's a container orchestration system. So in this case, Cloudify will be acting for Kubernetes as a orchestrator of orchestrators to a certain extent. So again, the, the goal of the overall project is hybrid orchestration. So where I have multiple platforms I'm orchestrating. So in this case, we see, uh, whoops, <laughs> hang on. We see the, uh, the master and the minions, so basically the worker and the masters here, MongoDB outside, and then the microservice. We can scale Kubernetes itself easily with the workflow. We can also scale the microservice externally with the orchestrator. Now, the, it's kind of hard to, uh, looking at that diagram, to understand the complexity of the, uh, the process that you need to do and the need for an orchestrator. But this is a partial list of the uh, steps required to do the orchestration. Um, a lot of it involves the coordination between different parts. It's, uh, it also involves setting up the network properly and modeling, actually, uh, the services in and outside of Kubernetes. Um, in this case, we'll be, we're not trying to usurp the, uh, the, uh, the job of Kubernetes and orchestrating containers. We're merely commanding Kubernetes from the ex outside. So uh, among other things, we'll be creating, dynamically creating templates of Kubernetes deployment descriptors, uh, pushing those into Kubernetes, um, properly parameterized so that they can recognize the services that are outside Kubernetes. Um, in addition to that, uh, uh, Cloudify provides the ability to auto scale based on arbitrary metrics that flow into the system. So, Part of, the, uh, part of the orchestration is a, an auto-scaling um, workflow. So automating that is a lot of work. Uh, anybody who's set up Kubernetes itself has discovered that it's a lot of work on its own. Um, having this all in an easily reproducible uh, blueprint uh, is highly valuable to make for repeatable, deployable environments you know, that are bulletproof. In addition, making, uh, making them cloud neutral is difficult. So in this example, we're running everything on OpenStack, but we have Kubernetes on OpenStack, we have MongoDB on OpenStack, so we're only using the OpenStack APIs, but the way the modeling language works in Cloudify, the, the clouds are pluggable, so there's, the core orchestration doesn't have to change. So in order to understand Cloudify a little better, um, we have to have a basic understanding of Tosca. So Tosca is an OASIS specification. It models deployments as graphs of nodes, essentially nodes and relationships. And a node can be anything that you need to orchestrate. 
That would include network components, software components, virtual components, hardware components, anything else. It's essentially code at the root level. Okay, nodes are implemented via a type system to avoid boilerplate, so you can create, for example, in our orchestration, it uses an OpenStack node that's based on a lower level node that has some basic uh, interfaces and operations that are common across all target platforms. And then everything's connected by relationships, and among other things, the relationships let the orchestrator know the order, the criticality of the different parts, and what order they need to be started in, and how they need to be connected. So, for example, in this standard sort of uh, Tosca view, we would have all these would be considered nodes in the, the OpenStack world, a floating IP, a network, a subnet, an application, the VM itself, and so forth. Okay. The orchestrator can interpret this model and deploy it in the most efficient way possible. So uh, once you have the model, you can actually run workflows on it. Pretty much nothing happens without workflows. That's the execution model. Um, the models ultimately point to actual code that can be run in distributed fashion across the clusters or uh, on the server itself. For example, a server node for OpenStack would define operations need for Nova, Neutron, and so forth. Um, so what we need to do for Kubernetes in this project was define a type for Kubernetes. There's some obvious types um, in Kubernetes. Uh, a master node, which is basically the controller, and the minion node, and so forth. And there's going to be code associated with each of those that's going to actually activate the APIs on either. So uh, in general, you would define operations on these to install and configure Kubernetes itself. Uh, probably in, a, in the done properly, we would delegate this step to a, a CM tool like uh, Salt, Puppet, Ansible, Chef, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in this case, um, not so. It's just Python. But um, So there's also custom types for MongoDB, uh, Mongo CFG, Mongo S. Actually, in this, the example I have, I only have a Mongo D running, but it's not important just for the example. Uh, define operations on these to install and configure. Again, that can be completely delegated to a CM tool. Okay, so we model it out here. We want to essentially have a microservice that runs in the master. The master will be contained in a master VM. The nodes. In the Kubernetes sense, running the node VM, okay? And then uh, when we scale, we can scale the node VM and the code, so we can scale Kubernetes dynamically. When we want to scale the microservice, we can scale this. All right, see, and that's what it looks like on a larger scale. So we'll just, uh, for simplicity's sake, this model assumes a flat network. We don't have any, uh, anything tricky with routing or anything. All right. So a standard workflow will uh, essentially walks the model, as I described earlier, for the installation, um, recognizes well-known endpoints that describe operations related to installation, like configure, install, start, and so forth. And those ultimately either trigger uh, custom code that you write or uh, chef cookbooks or puppet manifests or whatever uh, you have. Uh, note the VMs are independent, so when this is traversed, they will all be instantiated in parallel. So when the, when the orchestrator gets done, these all finish, and then the orchestrator is ready for the next level of dependency. It's going to march down to the master node. This is in installing the actual Kubernetes code on each of those. And then that's it. Now here's what the actual, uh, what an actual um, descriptor looks like. So in this case, uh, for OpenStack, you'll note that uh, the master host has a type, which is a OpenStack server. It has some probably familiar properties, you know, such as flavor and image. Um, it also has some relationships defined. 
So ultimately, these relationships are actually executable code. When they fire during the install process, it actually uh, triggers OpenStack APIs to do the, the proper connections. For example, create the uh, connect security group. OK, and uh, this is just an example security group definition. Nothing particularly tricky there. It looks pretty much like what you'd expect. Um, now here's a special uh, Kubernetes microservice type, an example of how that would be implemented. So it's got, it's very, it's very simple. It's got a, uh, um, a, a base type up here, but the main thing is it's got some basic, uh, uh, some basic properties here that need to be filled in, the image to run, the port for the service, the target port to the map. Essentially all of these values are going to get substituted into the actual Kubernetes descriptor before it, um, for, for the replication controller and the Kubernetes descriptor before it gets deployed. Okay, and then here we see the uh, interfaces for the, uh, the behavior. So this is just an example of how arbitrary code is tied to lifecycle events. For example, up here these are actually pointers to Python packages. It's actually running and exposing the Kubernetes service here, and another lifecycle stop event might trigger a delete. These are all standard interfaces for Cloudify. Okay, I already went over that. Let's go. We're running out of time. This is an example of the implementation, a uh, little bit more about the microservice type here. Essentially, uh, one of the ways to configure the custom microservice type is to specify an external service definition file and then just define overrides and that's what's going on here. So this is the way that information from outside of Kubernetes can be injected into the service launch so that it knows, for example, the microservice in this case is, a, is the old node seller uh, application. This is how we actually feed it the MongoDB port IDs and other information it needs. In addition to this, the, uh, the Kubernetes uh, pod that's created will have metrics gathering, which will eventually find its way back to the, the uh, Cloudify server. This is the Kubernetes native description. So this is essentially what we're overwriting at runtime. OK, and like I said, the, uh, yeah, I'll just skip over this because I don't have time. Anyway, we. Uh, as part of the, uh, the pod, we, uh, we insert uh, Diamond D collectors. Diamond D inj uh, injects metrics into a RabbitMQ in the Cloudify um, server from which uh, various workflows can be triggered, including auto scaling, auto healing, and so forth. So, takeaways Tosca makes complex orchestrations. Um, more understandable. It hides the cloud APIs completely behind uh, type definitions. Uh, it's an orchestrator. It can render a Tosca blueprint on any infrastructure, so it's not, living, it's not limited to clouds. Any kind of virtual, uh, any virtual inf infrastructure, cloud infrastructure, or physical infrastructure, it doesn't really matter. And then it's an orchestrator that can coordinate other orchestrators Essentially, it can orchestrate uh, pretty much anything. This is what the Cloudify server looks like. And uh, ignoring here, which is basically related to the REST API, we have Elasticsearch for the database, RabbitMQ at the heart, which is where all the events are being fed into, really all of the executions. We have the sal sal salary task broker, which is doing all of the remote executions for us asynchronously. Uh, InfluxDB is storing a time series database of collected metrics. And Riemann is doing the real-time event processing to trigger automatic uh, scaling. So having said that, I actually started it up before this. So let's take a look at it. Uh, where are we at here? All right, so 
Oh, that's good. This is the Cloudify UI. So each of these, the way, the way this uh, deployment was, or these deployments were architected was to separate them. So the meaning of this K <laughs> here, the blueprint, this is Kubernetes. OK. Here's the base, uh, a graphical representation of that relationship. The master being inside the master host. Uh, the Kubernetes is just a more of a graphical sh uh, separation there. It doesn't have any real meaning to it. The minion host, uh, there's a uh, representation of the security groups and the networks. If we want to look at the source of that. It's too slow. Error browsing, great. So let's look at Okay, MongoD is very simple. It's just a host with Mongo. Um and this is the hybrid service. OK, and here and you get the idea. And the hybrid service is essentially reaching out to the other deployments. They all have a completely distinct life cycle. They can come as go as they please. This connects a node seller to the Kubernetes proxy. So if we were to look at how this is actually uh, well, actually, let's look at the. Uh, uh, let's make sure it's actually running here. Okay, so this is the uh, the actual application. Let's launch. This is running in a microservice in Kubernetes. It's hitting the Mongo database uh, described in there. Um, let me. Sh let's look at the Kubernetes side. So here on, uh, on the, this is a Kubernetes master node. On here we can see we can actually see the uh, the pod running with the uh, the node seller app in it, the Diamond D collector in there, the events flowing back to the server. Where am I at here? That's weird. Bear logs. OK, well, never mind that. We won't look at that. You just have to take my word for it. The events are flowing back into the, uh, the Riemann uh, real-time event processing. If we want to run workflows, um, we can actually come here. Oh, that's interesting. I lost it. Yeah, I lost that. OK, never mind. So now, one of the things that this kind of high-level orchestration lets you do is uh, embed this capability of doing advanced orchestration inside of another, uh, basically, a, a front end that abstracts the cloud platforms. So this is a uh, this is a product by a, a partner of ours, Mist.io, that uh, has a potential management uh, sort of a unified management view across multiple multiple clouds. And what they do is allow the the uh, deployment of templates. For example, here's Kubernetes on core OS and so forth. Uh, let you target any cloud independently, so you can just offer that up as a as a service that's easily consumable. This, uh, this product's built on top of Cloudify. And uh, 
takes care of all the automation in the back end, and then they take care of all the uh, sweetener on the front end. I guess we got to know we have zero minutes. Any questions, though? Nope. Thank you.